Well, it's been a major policing operation with many officers injured in the line of duty as they face that widespread violence. And we're joined now by Nazir Afsal, the former Chief Crown Prosecutor for North West England. Thank you for coming in and joining us. Um, the last time we can remember seeing scenes like this really was back in 20, uh, 2011. How was that stopped? What lessons did we learn from there as to how we can possibly tackle what's going on? Uh, it stopped because good people did what they did in the last, this weekend and, and protected the most vulnerable uh, communities. It stopped because um, the criminal justice went into shock and awe mode, uh, which is 24-hour uh, courts, uh, people being brought to justice swiftly, uh, facing very severe penalties. Uh, something like 2,000 people at the end of the day were convicted, some of them for a lot longer than they imagined they would go to prison for. Uh, it happened quickly. It dampened, pe dampened uh, the danger that people felt, the risk people felt. It made people feel more reassured that something was going to change. Uh, and as I think Oliver said a moment ago, there's a lot of fear. Uh, you know, my, my son said to me yesterday, Dad, when's it going to stop? And, you know, people who are, particularly people of colour, are feeling very, very frightened right now. And so we've got to provide them with the reassurance that we've learned from what happened in 2011. We did bring people to justice. And if you were involved in the riots, you will go to prison. We now have drone footage, CCTV footage. We have social media footage. We have, we've had an increase in smartphones, but a reduction in smart people. Yes, yeah, some people filming themselves. It really beggars belief. That is overwhelming evidence against them. They will plead guilty when they are ultimately charged. Um, so we've got stacks of evidence. The police have already downloaded it. Uh, it's been saved, secured. It's going to be examined. Uh, and that means that um, you can delete as much as you like. But also, it has to be said that those who weren't involved in the writing directly on, at the time, but may have encouraged it, incited it, they too will be very concerned, but they too will get a knock on the door. So there will be real reassurance because real change can be brought by what's planned over the next few days and weeks. Is the criminal justice system able to cope with um, what the Home Secretary has called a, a reckoning? Are we in a different situation than we were in 2011? We know that the prisons are pretty much full. We know that there's a huge backlog of court cases already. How can we possibly think about introducing potentially hundreds, potentially thousands of people into the system? Is that practical? It is practical, because we did it in 2011. We had austerity then, and um, uh, so we, we, ha we know how to do this. There will be a knock-on effect. There's no getting away from it. There are cases that ought to be heard and, and planned to be heard in the next week or two, which will be delayed because the judges and the courts are occupied. We've had a reduction in the number of police stations over the last 10 years. We've had a reduction in the number of court buildings. However, we know what worked. We have a protocol put in place in 2011, which enables us to ensure that we have judges in place, prosecutors know what they're doing, police officers know what they're doing. And as I said, strangely, we've got more evidence now than we had back then. People have stupidly filmed themselves committing these crimes. Uh, and that, quite frankly, makes the cases so much easier to prosecute. Um I wonder whether there will be a frustration here, too. Clearly, people want law and order back on the streets, but they will say people are shoplifting with impunity because you don't arrest shoplifters because we can't prosecute because there's not capacity. People who've suffered burglaries, the police don't turn up because they can't prosecute. Uh, victims of really serious crimes are waiting 22 months, I think, on average, for that case to get to the courts. And yet, when we need to, we can fast-track cases in 24 hours. There will be a sense that this isn't fairly applied across the board, and why is this different? I was here on Friday talking about this particular subject. Absolutely, there are massive delays in the system. They, were pre they predate COVID. 60-odd 60, 60 thousand cases in the Crown Court, half a million cases in the Magistrates' Court. Uh, and all and of those will wait even longer. They, will wait, they will wait longer. Some of them will. Yeah. Um, but you know, we can bring in, as we... You know, the government are planning to bring in specialist courts. They're bring, planning to bring in uh, more retired judges, appoint more judges. So there is a strategy in place to deal with the massive delays that are in place. However, be blunt, this is an emergency. 
it requires an emergency response. And Britain's good at emergency responses, and this is one. Unfortunately, if you were involved in the right, you would go to prison. If you incited or conspired with those who carried out the right, you would go to prison. If you simply transported people to the right, you will go to prison. And you go to prison for years, not months. Nazir Afsal, thank you.